Hello and welcome to Conversations with Irma. This is the well of inspiration. We come here to learn, to unlearn. We come here to sit together and listen to each other. This is the platform where we are sure, 100% sure, that everything that is said on this platform is real. So today, I am beyond excited. I am honored to have on the show someone very special. In fact, he doesn't need any introduction anymore because when you say Coach Gael, they're like, okay, we know Coach Gael. But a lot of people, they have so many questions. Okay, so Coach Gael, is he a, a musician? Or is he working on a song? Like, I don't know. Like, people oh have so many questions. Others are like, oh, he's a coach. He's a financial coach. Others are like, oh, we know him in real estate. So many things. But today, you are discovering another facade of Coach Gael. You are discovering him as a person, his journey, what he went through. And I'm so excited. So without further ado, allow me to receive, ladies and gentlemen, here on the show, Gael Karumba. Welcome. Thank you so much, Irma. Thank you for the kind words. And first of all, I can't be a musician. I can't sing at all. Yeah, I mean, people, people see you with, um, with you know, celebrities, I and they're like, no, no, it's just because I do business. Of course, I also into the entertainment industry, but uh, I'm not a musician. I can't sing at all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for it's resting pleasure. us. Pleasure. For being pleasure, here Emma. with us. No pleasure. I'm so happy to be here with you. Hope that uh, people are going to get inspired, and then uh, we're going to learn each other. So uh, tell me, how do you manage everything in your life? So I think uh, I always say, actually, in my coachings, it's about two things, you know, time management, how you manage your time. And then number two, delegation, trusting people around you. Uh, so uh, as an entrepreneur, you know, you can't just do one thing. You know, there's so many things. For example, me, I'm involved in so many things. And um, I, I, I call myself a serial entrepreneur. Because uh, I keep, uh, I just refuse just to be a simple man. I just keep uh, uh, expanding and do a lot of things and try different investments. So, but the key to all that is to really uh, manage your time, you know, really be disciplined, uh, have a schedule and stick to it, no matter what. And then number two, uh, build a team around you, people that you can trust and just trust them, you know, uh, have them, help them to help you. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. So I want to want to take you back before we can really dive into what you do in terms of work. Uh, but uh, just take us back. You know, right. how, how how who was Gael growing up as a child in school? I think okay, um, Gael growing up, I was very fun uh, and I was uh, smart. I really liked to study. Um, I was actually. Um, uh, an elder brother to three other boys. So it was, uh, you know, our house was always full of people. You know, it was a good family, happy family. So I didn't uh, really encounter a lot of uh, struggles growing up. You know, it won't be like these inspiration stories. Oh, I grew up this, I grew up, no, uh, we were okay. We were okay growing up. But I, didn't, I really didn't have uh, great aspirations or great dreams. Our life, I said, that uh, when I was five or eight or 10 or 12, I had these big dreams, not at all. Yeah. I was just, you know, a simple kid. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, I was good at school, but, you know, playing video games and stuff like that. And, and then uh, um, went to high school, but then when I, when I studied high school, I started to maybe uh, see things in a different way because mm -hmm. I started to travel. I had to leave my family when I was 18, went to Uganda first, Okay. Um, yes, I did study for a whole year at McKinley University and I was just there for a couple of courses. Uh, then after that, went to India for five years. And then after India, went to, to the U.S. So me at 18, having to go away from my family, mm -hmm. away from my country, away yes. from my culture, I got to really encounter different, different cultures yes. and different perspectives. So really that, I think that put something in me, you know, I, and that made me a student of life. You know, I, I, uh, I consider myself a student of life. I do learn from everybody. I do it from different perspectives and different cultures. And I'm always, uh, and that made me flexible. I'm open and flexible to learn and explore different things. And that's how I found myself in too many, many businesses and many, many uh, adventures. So that's the whole me. So, um, 
grew in, grew, grew up, uh, was born in Burundi, grew up in Rwanda, moved around Uganda, India, US, and now back in Africa doing some adventures. Oh yeah, I love that. So, um, like, I, 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 I can imagine that um, your life was so interesting. You know, it's, right. it's, it's quite a journey, like living in different countries, different cultures. Yeah. Uh, so there is um, uh, something we call uh, turning points. You know, those uh, points of your life that you can recall, you can remember. Like this happened to me at this age. I was here, and this changed me. So I want to understand when did you become an entrepreneur? When did you when did you become Coach Gaia? When did you enter like this uh, phase of your life where you started like uh, being productive, uh, blessing many people, like becoming the person that you are today? Where were like can you identify the turning points in your life? Yes, uh, that's a very good question. I think it was when I was in the U.S. Because when I went to the U.S., <clears throat> um, before then, you know, my family was comfortable. My dad, my mom, they were okay, you know, financially. Uh, but when I went to the U.S., something happened. Um, so we had to go through some uh, financial difficulties at home. And I was the only person, even though I was uh, in my early 20s, uh, now I had to take on some responsibilities. You know, I had to be like, okay, now I have little brothers, I have to help out with school fees. I have to do this, I have to do that. So I think, um, but then I got depressed because uh, back then, I think it was uh, almost uh, one year and a half when I was in the US. I couldn't work. I couldn't, so I wasn't really, you know, earning any income, you know. Mm -hmm. as, and this is so many people who have lived uh, overseas, not only in the US, but also you know, in, uh, in Europe. You have to go through some time where like you're stuck financially. Yeah. Um, so I went through some depression back then because even though my family needed me, I couldn't help as much as I wanted. And I started to realize, hey, now also I have a future. Uh, I have to build something. I have to leave a legacy. But then there's so many things going on. So I went through a, a depression. And do you uh, feel like the depression was... Um, like that heaviness, like being the bigger brother, yes. wanting to, yes. to do something for the little brothers. Yes, I think for me, and that's what I always say, uh, if you really want someone to grow, give them responsibility. You know, responsibilities will really force you to grow. You know, they'll force you out, out of your comfort zone. That and, that's, and that's what happened to me. I think because no one was responsible, yes. I was like, okay, now I know. I started to think, and me, I'm a person, I'm a kind of person who really stress a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I, because I think of so many things and details, and I'm like, okay, what if this happens? What if this happens? Um, and uh, during that season, my family, actually, my dad had a terrible accident. Oh, yeah. Almost died. Uh, he was my two little brothers. That actually uh, was told the news. I was like, wow, wow this is... It was really tough for me, um, but almost died. So I, I went through depression, and because of the stress and depression, um, the sleeplessness, uh, I developed ulcers in my stomach, and they got to a point where they busted, and I had really blood. My stomach, I almost you know stopped my heart. Wow. Yes, That's you know I was rushed into the to the hospital. I got to you know. They uh, uh, almost died. I remember that there was like a time where they told me, hey, run here. So oh. I got back. So when uh, they uh, was, uh, when I, when actually uh, I remember it was uh, around 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. When I opened my eyes, I realized that I was at a hospital. I didn't know how I got there. Oh, wow. um, so for the next three days, I went through these procedures to just removing all my blood in my stomach and everything. So in my recovery, I would say that's when I started to be serious with the things of like, you know what, now I have to start really being serious about uh, uh, entrepreneurship mm. and um, being a solution. Mm. Uh, I had plans before then, actually, let me go back. I had plans before the whole thing, the whole uh, hospitalization. Mm -hmm. I had planned to go back to school, 
and do my PhD in theology because my uh, thing right back then was to go into ministry full time. But then when that uh, accident, accident happened, happened yeah. and then my hospitalization, I spent all my savings, Emma, all my savings into the hospital and everything. So now it was like, okay, now it's, it's like someone was just pressing the reset button. Yeah. Now I'm going back from zero. Yeah. So something happened from nowhere. I started to really be interested to real estate because yeah. that's what I grew up seeing my dad doing. My dad was an engineer building houses. So uh, I started to be really interested in real estate and then started uh, in the adventure and I was blessed and I was successful. Uh, from the real estate company, I started a healthcare company also. It grew. And then uh, uh, I stayed some other investments, and that's how I'm here. Wow. Um, so back to your story, when you, you got sick and you, you got healed as well. <clears throat> yeah, of course, yeah. So I, I'm wondering, uh, I was thinking as you were like uh, talking to me, uh, maybe that decision that you made, you know, to embrace a fresh start, it is also because you felt like this is a second chance I'm given. Yes. And you were seeing life in a very different perspective. 100%. 100%. You're like, okay, now I'm here. I almost died. Like, actually died and came back to life. Yeah. So this is a fresh start. This is a second chance. Yeah. And I need to, like, I need to really, like, fulfill everything that I can. I need to release my potential. So do you think sometimes in our lives... You know, we go through difficulties and tests, but it becomes a blessing because of, 100%. you know, the lesson that we get from that, you know, is, is going to change our lives. 100%. Actually, uh, there is a difference between school and real life. I always tell people, in school, you first study, okay? You study, they give you textbooks and stuff, you do research, you do homeworks, and then comes a time where you pass a test. So that's how you learn in school. In life, it's uh, completely the other way around. You start with the test, and then you learn after. Mm. So, as you said, Emma, things that uh, are really tough that we go through, mm -hmm. uh, they're not just there to really, if they don't kill you, <laughs> if you are still around, yeah. I think you could use those things to your advantage now because they make you stronger yeah. and they make you wiser that is yeah true. yeah so, so to me it was like okay now this is a second chance um maybe with all this thing happening i can just be comfortable and just keep on going to school as i was thinking maybe now it's time to really be entrepreneurial and think and be a solution for my family mm -hmm. so and so that pushed me so the things that was happening with my family my sickness, all these things really push, positioned me to put me in a position where I could, you know what, now I have to be a solution. Now I have to be an entrepreneur. Now I, now I have to leave my comfort zone. You know, for just, okay, let me just be this. And Because to me, I'm, uh, I'm a kind of person who really like books. I would just even, I would just be happy to be a scholar for life, you oh, know. But, but then that pushed me into my, out of my comfort zone to be like, you know, go there. Um, so yeah, I would say, Sometimes things that don't kill us, they make us wiser, stronger, and they even position us in a position where now we can be like, you know what, this is my way to my purpose. Wow. Now I believe 100% that mm -hmm. now I'm my purpose. I meet my mm -hmm. purpose. Yeah. I'm doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, I'm using the gifts and the talents that I'm supposed to be using. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was because of that. Mm -hmm. And the, so th there are changes that you made, you know, tangible changes. Yeah, like for embracing sure. Embracing the journey to become an entrepreneur, working, you know, uh, even be willing, uh, uh, the, the fact that you were willing to do many jobs, you know, to, yeah. you know, to create wealth and to go after it. But I want to know what are the changes that you decided to make from inside on your personal development? 
because you got sick. So obviously, there's some changes you decided to make because you 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 became sick because of stress, because yeah, yeah, of like so uh, the, the 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 habits, the yeah, yeah, habits, sure, all yeah. of that. So I want to know, like, what? How was it that? How was um, those changes? You know, good for you? How did they affect you? Like, can you stress on that? Actually, Emma, thank you so much. Actually, uh, there is something that really. Um, it's something that I really want to emphasize on. Because when that happened, even pushed me to be healthier. Because mm -hmm. back then I was really, really overweight. And the reason why I was overweight, it was because um, I was working three, four jobs, not enough rest, a lot of stress, um, unhealthy eating habits. But then when that, when that happened, so now that changed the whole thing. Hey, this is a second chance now to take care of my body. I have to sleep better. I have to plan. I have to now make sure that uh, I do some uh, uh, things that could relax my mind. I can't overstress. I have to put my spiritual life in check, mm -hmm. you know, so that I don't stress a lot, all those kind of things. And that, of course, helps you not only to be a better person, a healthier person, but also a better businessman because mm -hmm. when your body is right mm -hmm. and emotionally right you make better decisions mm -hmm. you know you make better decisions your, your energy is higher yes. you know the things that i do now like how i juggle different uh, industries and this i'm here next time there i couldn't do it if i'm, if I'm not healthy yes. you know I, I can't have that energy Mm -hmm. You know, if I don't uh, eat healthy, sleep healthy, all those kind of things. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I think that really uh, not only the things that I had to change in terms of like professionally, but also uh, inwardly. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some decisions, of course, mm -hmm. uh, that happen. And then, you know, right now, I could say uh, to me, I believe that the mind, um, the body and the soul, all those have to be in, in sync. Harmony. Yes. I, I totally yes. Agree for you to be a successful person, hundred percent, and that's the thing. Mm -hmm. All successful people, they're healthier, they're really healthy, and they're spiritual. People, many people don't know, but mm -hmm. all successful. I, I people, want to know more about that. Yeah, all successful people, they're healthy, and they're spiritual. Wow. Because you can't be good in business if you're somehow not spiritual. Why? Actually, I was. Uh, reading this article, and then I found uh, this uh, uh, place, this article, someone was saying that uh, the word businessman, in Hebrew, it means a man of faith. Hmm. And then he, he went on explaining how that's right. Because mm -hmm. a business person is somebody who goes and find the capital, risk maybe, you know, his own money, all his savings, mm -hmm. and he just invests everything in what? In his vision. Mm -hmm. Just vision. Oh. Just vision. And you can't do that without faith. You can't. Because all, all entrepreneurs or business people are crazy. They, will, they tell you the end of their business, what's going to be like, before before, it, before it even starts. Yeah. So before what? It starts. Yes. What is that? Emma? It's faith. That's faith. That's faith. So, um, so, so, so yeah, it has to be. Hmm. So, when we say faith or spiritual, many many people maybe may say, "Oh, you know what? It's you know, it's what they maybe usually say. Oh, go to church, do this, do that." But it's it's deeper than that, because there's so many people who goes to church who are not even spiritual. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, but you have to do that, and and also. Now let's go on the other on the other extreme. So to start a business, of course, you have to, you gotta have faith. What about to maintain a business or to maintain a sane mind? Uh, with stress of the business, with all these kind of things, if you really don't believe or somehow don't get your rest mm -hmm. in a higher power, you could also go crazy. Mm. So that's that's why you have to be spiritual yeah. if you really want you to be balanced. You have to. Yeah. You have to, because uh, things will happen. The things will happen that could just make you go crazy. The worries, the stress, you know, the employees, um, crisis. Uh, so you so you just have, have to believe in, in the higher power that everything will be okay. You know, just do your best. 
Okay? Mm. Control you can what you can control, but then what you can control, just leave it. Oh wow. Yeah, leave, leave it. So yeah. you, you have to. You have to be oh, spiritual. Wow. Thank you very much. So for those who just uh, joined us, welcome, welcome. This is Conversation with Irma, and I am having a good conversation with Coach Gael. So he just talked about so many things. He shared with us his journey, um, how he went through depression, how he uh, bounced back, and how he embraced the journey as an entrepreneur. So just... Stay with us. I hope you're learning one or two things. I am learning. I'm not taking notes, but I'm learning, I promise. <laughs> so, uh, Gail, I want to know, like, going through life, you go through different things. You're right. You know, like, you even <clears throat> say, like, I went through depression. I know what yeah. depression is. Because I know depression, yeah. I know the importance of mental health. Yeah, right. And because I know a crisis, I know the importance of, you know, working hard and, like, actually setting up systems yeah, right. to maintain all that. So I, I believe what you went through is also, it has contributed a lot to the wisdom that you have now. 100%, yeah. yeah so no uh, let's talk a little bit about the entrepreneurship journey. Mm -hmm. Starting from zero, should I say. You're right. You're young, you're in your early 20s, and you are starting, you know, to make money. Right. You don't know anything, you don't know much, maybe because you, you love books, maybe yeah, you've right. read some things. So I'm pretty sure that a lot of people that are watching us, um, we have some young people, uh, aspiring entrepreneurs or young entrepreneurs. So how does somebody start a business? Thank you. So, yeah, Emma, <clears throat> I would say uh, my advice to young people, and it's never too late. We can just say young people. Yeah, I know. It's never that too is late. True. That is true. It's never too late to turn your life around. You oh, know? Wow. Don't worry, it's never too late. You know, when it comes to entrepreneurship and business, it's, just, it's not just for young people. Um, uh, Sanders, the founder of uh, KFC, mm -hmm. he studied the KFC we see today at 60-something. Wow. With his pension money. $100 per month. And he was like, well, I, can just, I can just sit here and just collect my pension. Mm -hmm. What about just buy some uh, chicken legs and fry them and just sell to people? And that turned into KFC. So it's never too late, you know? So first of all, let's just rectify that. Mm -hmm. So I would say, um, when it comes to how being an entrepreneur, how building a business, I would say, number one, have a vision. Have a vision. You have to see the end, Emma. Because mm -hmm. when you see the end, <clears throat> then... You know, the, you, know, you know the why. Mm. You know really what you want to accomplish. And really when you see the end, the vision, you have your vision right there. You know the why. Um, the reason why you want to really accomplish that. That really will motivate you throughout. And that will keep you really going no matter what you go through. Mm. No matter what, you know, life throws at you, you just keep on going. I love that point. Yeah. You know, it just reminded me, uh, I know you read the Bible and I know you love the Bible. Yeah. It just reminded me of the, of, the script, of the scripture that says, because of the joy that Jesus could the, see. The, that was set before him. That was set before him. Yes. He, has he was to, able to endure the cross. Exactly. So you got to see it. Mm, so you, you, you got to see that thing. Okay. I can tell you so many things. You have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do that. But first you have to see something. Yeah. If you don't see it, uh, then... It will be really tough. Yeah, you know, you, you can't. It, it you will can't be. Continue. You, you can continue. So first of all, say so. Now let's be practical. See something. Set your set your vision, and then out of out of your vision, of course, set practical goals. Okay, be like, okay, this year, this is what I want to accomplish. Okay, every year I have goals, Emma. <clears throat> Actually, I was telling you the other day that my goals now is to study on marketing and uh, sell sales. Those are the two things that I really want to focus on this to year. Master. I want to master those things, those two things. I would say, uh, say the thing and then continue to self-develop. Have goals to self-develop. I have a master's in mathematics. 
And guess how much I use it in my business today? Zero. Every skill that I use in my business today, I self-learned. Mm. And now there's no excuse. Yeah. We're in the information age. Yeah. Where you can find whatever Everything information is available. it's available on Everything. the internet, yeah. it's available on, on YouTube, you can watch, you can listen, you can read, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. But please make sure that you self-develop, learn skills that are needed in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. You know, I always see people like, you know, they go to school and they study these type of things, like, no, 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 this is not needed. Mm. Look where the, the world is going. You know, research the skills that are going to be in need in three, five, ten years. And, and, and if everything is available on the internet, just go self-learn and uh, work hard and save money. That you is know, very important. Three things. Vision, self-develop, learn skills and everything. And then three, if you have, if you have a job, please master. It's, I call it the art of managing money. You know, the art of managing money. Make sure if you're making money, and this is this this is a rule that I have. Make sure that if you have if if you if you are uh, you're getting a salary, at least fifty percent goes into your necessities. Fifty to sixty necessities means okay, uh, my uh, rent, my food, my school fees, the necessities. That's necessities, things that you can't live without. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the remaining forty percent. That's a huge basket of investing, 30 to 40%. You can invest in other businesses, or if it's just right now too little that you can invest in other businesses, <clears throat> or you don't know where to invest, at least invest in your knowledge, mm -hmm. invest in books, invest in courses, or just save it, mm -hmm. okay? And then the 10%, you can have fun in it, but 10. Wow. 10. So, if you make $1,000, you can enjoy $100. If you make $10,000, you can then enjoy $1,000. Wow. So if you want to increase <laughs> your enjoyment, your, your, your portion, your, your, your fun portion, <laughs> your fun the, portion. Yeah, then increase the whole income increase in general. Income. Do you know what I'm saying? But, but, but stay on that thing. Mm. Stay on that. I cannot. More than 10% in fun? No. So... Um, any young person, any person, they do those three things. If not, the sky is the limit. Wow. Vision, discipline of redeveloping yourself, and you really manage your money. You see your money is going and just manage it wisely. The sky is wow. the limit. I, I and it's simple. That. You see, it sounds simple. It, that doesn't even require for you to have like a master's degree. No, it's just simple. Wisdom life. Wow. It's really simple. Yeah, so do you believe there is a uh, balance? You know, people are talking about balance, achieving uh, life balance, uh, especially when you are a hardworking person, someone who has big dreams, who actually is an achiever, a go-getter, as they say. And at the same time, you're a family man. Yeah, at the right. same time, you know, you're a friend. Like, how do somebody achieve balance? I yeah, yeah, 100% I believe in balance. Because without balance, you know, you cannot. But, though, there's also another school of thought that really goes on the extreme when it comes to balance. And it's always about balance. It's always about just uh, those things. And, and then you don't achieve your full potential. Because you are into that so-called balance. But, you know... Can, can you explain more? I, I would say to me, when it comes to balance, <clears throat> it works... I, I do it in terms of like, like I said, I schedule time for everything. If it's family time, it's scheduled. Mm. It's, if it's party time, it's scheduled. When you keep it in the, in the boundaries of really scheduling, yeah. then you, at least you are... You won't find yourself like everything, every week now it's balanced. Every week you're just, you know, doing this. Everything. Yeah. Because, because as also as someone who really aspire, aspire to do a lot, yeah. you have to sacrifice a little. Yeah. You know, I cannot, me as a serial entrepreneur, live the life a normal employee live. Yeah. They have more time to balance than me. And have so many obligations and so many times. So it means you don't have balance. Then. No, 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 no. It depends what you call balance. 
you know, I would say I for mean, me. Balance is. You are like check, you know, check. Yeah. Successful entrepreneur. Balance. Check versus that. Check versus husband. But, but check it, best friend. Like, but I think the best dad. Uh, and best friend and best husband kind of things you can check on that in less time. I don't think that uh, you can, you, you have to like be there for someone 50 hours a week for you yeah. to be able so to train that down. It's, 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 it's personal, balance is personal, like how people define it. Yes, I think, I think it's personal. And I think also it depends if your dreams and aspirations. You don't, no, they have to be a sacrifice. Ima, you won't see. Anybody who's successful right now, let's say multi-millionaire or multi-billionaire, like so entrepreneurs, so many companies, who's like balanced in terms you were trying to be like, okay, uh, they're just like a normal employee or a normal husband or a normal wife. It can be, it can be. No, I, I think that they have to be able to do sacrifice, but the best time you have, can you at least make it efficient? Know, be present in the moment. Be present in the moment. You make it efficient. If it's time with the kids, be there with them. Okay. Be there with them. Maybe try to put the phone away. Be there with them. Play. Keep through the moment. Yes. Maybe right. If it's just one week out of the whole month, you're going to keep it. Okay. Because you're trying to build something for you, but it's uh, like maybe you don't have the luxury to spend um, the whole week with your spouse because you have to travel. But at least the day, the day that you get three of weeks, you know, make it work. Okay. So, that, so, so yeah, you can still balance, but not uh, not at the cost of the day. That's what I believe. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, we're listening. Like, yeah, 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 no, I, I can't. You know, because it's, it's so interesting. Because sometimes you want to know, like, how the millionaires actually, actually, actually do you, um, do you understand about it? So one person was given one talent, mm -hmm. the other one two, and the other one five. Yes. That's a very interesting talent. That uh -huh. is story. Mm -hmm. First of all, why different talents? Okay. Why? Why not all of them five? Mm -hmm. But that's how even life is. Mm -hmm. You know, we are given uh, different capabilities that and different true. abilities. That is true. Okay. And... And, that, and that's why whoever has one talent, they won't be as 10, mm -hmm. but at least they'll be as two. Mm -hmm. But that person who has one talent, they can be able to go use it and still have a lot of time to balance whatever you're talking about. Oh, yeah. See, because for them, they just have to check one talent. Mm -hmm. They have to use one talent. Maybe it's just being a good employee. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just being a good CEO yes. you know, in one company. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just being a one uh, uh, um, a partner in some type, in some type of uh, business, and that's it. They just work forty hours a week, six hours a week. They are happy. They are home, and you know they get all, all the time in in the world to do all that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's so important to know yourself, exactly. and know what works for you, exactly, and know your uniqueness. You Hundred percent. So, what if you're a five talent person? Oh yeah. Now it's no longer enough just to be. Mm -hmm. Just a CEO. Yeah. Because now you also have to be a writer. Mm -hmm. You have to be a motivator, a speaker. Now you have to like um, you know be involved in different uh, in, uh, in different industries. So now you, you need it, to know how. Now you cannot how. tell me that now your schedule will stay forty exactly. hours a week. Exactly. Your schedule now will go to one hundred hours a week, mm -hmm. one twenty. Mm -hmm. So now you adjust. Yeah, I think it's important to Did you know. say? Exactly. I see. I see what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's also important not to compare people. No, no, you not to compare know. ourselves with other people. And that's why, and, and please, people have families. Uh, I'm talking to uh, people who have uh, spouses, partners, or even friends, mm -hmm. or even children. Mm -hmm. Don't be like, oh, the other family, they're like that. They see each other the whole time, and this, this, and that. But that other family, they mm -hmm. don't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or growing up as kids, you might be like, um, those are the parents, those are the kids. They see their parents the whole time. Yeah. But we don't. Mm -hmm. That should be a problem. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it comes down to that. Mm -hmm. Are we 
Are you a five-time person or a one-time person? I'm not saying that if you're a five-time person, then ignore everything around you. But there have to be a sacrifice. Yes. And people who, who are supporting you, people who are around you, uh, your partners and everybody, your spouse, they have to be supportive of who you are. Yes. You know? So you have, first of all, to understand who you are and, of course, build a team around you that will understand who you are. Mm-hmm. You know? Because if you're a five-time person and people want to drag you and make you one time person, a one-time person, you won't be happy, you'll be, mis- you be miserable, yeah. and you won't be a faithful servant. Yeah, I think you are a 10 talents yeah. person. <laughs> You're not even five. <laughs> You're a 10 talents person. Yeah. Yes, so we have to, like, uh, you know, we have All to right. sacrifice. Yeah, that's, that's so interesting. Yeah, so I, I uh, listening to you and everybody listening to us, you know, just um, going, uh, like, flowing, you know, with, with you like the conversation you know touching different areas of life uh so um i would like to know is there any uh anything that has ever happened to you in your life that you feel like wow that was a failure and i have regrets oh my goodness so many failures in my life so many mistakes so many failures um but zero regrets okay oh yeah yeah zero regrets um, <clears throat> cause in my failures, in my mistakes, I learned. Mm. So if I'll just go back, remove the failures, remove the mistakes, then I won't have the wisdom I have right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cause we learn wisdom. Mm-hmm. I, I believe that wisdom is through experience. Mm-hmm. That's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. You can learn knowledge. You can read about knowledge. You can read about marriage. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't make you a better husband or wife. Because when you go through marriage, when you go through life, when you go through something, now that's when you attain wisdom. Because wisdom is knowledge applied. Mm. You have to apply the knowledge. So I would say, yes, yeah, so many failures, Emma. So many uh, mistakes. And what was your biggest lesson? Um, I would say my two biggest. Mm-hmm. My, my first lesson, I trusted blindly people. Mm. So that was my first mistake. And my biggest wisdom out of it. <clears throat> now I still love people. I still trust them. But wisely. Mm-hmm. Not blindly, yeah. wisely. Mm-hmm. But still, I'm not bitter towards people, yeah. you know, but now I'm wiser. Mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I'm more wiser in terms of like even selecting people that I work with. Mm-hmm. So that's something that uh, um, it's, it's been serving me well now and it's going to serve me in the future, but it's because something bad really happened through my mistakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, my second lesson would be um, to forgive. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Forgiveness? Forgiveness. Okay. Because I feel like people that that forgive, they're free people. Yeah. Yeah, I consider myself as a free people because I don't have hate. Okay. Yeah, hate is so... Heavy. So heavy, so... It's so uncool. (laughs) It's uncool. It's uncool. Oh, but it, it can be hard. It can be hard to no, forgive. There's no, there's no swag in being bitter <laughs> and being a hater. <laughs> no, yeah. I think that because oh, yeah. when because there's there's this thing. <clears throat> Actually, let me put it this way. And forgiveness mm-hmm. is putting someone in prison, mm-hmm. thinking that you are really punishing them. Mm-hmm. And then later realize that the person is you. Wow. It's yourself in that prison. Wow. Sometimes the person that you, you're, not, you're not even forgiving, they don't even care. They're just free. They just... And it's mm-hmm. you who's carrying that whole weight of... Yeah, that is so thing. true. Yeah, yeah. It's you. Wow. So just be free. Be free. Free, free that person. It's you. It's you. Wow. You you holding a grudge towards them? It, it's not even hurting them. It's not. It, it's nothing. 
Wow. Just for yourself. I, I, yeah. I love that. That's yeah. profound. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And what was the happiest moment of your life? Emma, that's the most difficult question you could ask me because I'm a very happy person. Yeah, so you're all the time happy. Huh? You're all the time happy. Yeah, I'm happy. And, and I think there's so many things that happened in my life that made me happy. You can't that, name uh, one? No, I like when did you? When did you, like the, the first day you realized that I became a millionaire? Uh, what was the feeling? That didn't make me happy. What? And yeah. <laughs> no, maybe that made me happy, but I can't say it was the number one thing. But, okay. but, 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 but also, what was the feeling? But also, I'm not going to lie. The, maybe let me <laughs> rephrase? rephrase the question <laughs> and ask it to myself. Okay. I would say, what are the things that makes you happy? Mm-hmm. The things that makes you happy. Maybe I'll put it that way. Yeah. The things that makes me happy the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not going to be cliche and be like, oh, it's my family, my kids, this, even though they, they're my joy. Yeah. But the thing that really makes me happy is when I have a, I have a goal, I have a vision. I have, you smash it. Yes, I have something that I'm trying to build um, business-wise, and they smash it, and they yeah. achieve it. That's, yes. Because now it has turned into a game for me. It's like, it's like yes, I'm scoring, scoring a goal. Oh, yeah. That makes me happier. Hundred percent, for sure. Amazing. And then I'm trying to a new project one I'm building, and it starts to profit. That makes me happy. But I still want to know that first notification when you like that, that you happened know. in the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's so yeah. many I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, the one, the first one. <laughs> I still want to know like, <laughs> when you just saw like, okay, I don't remember this, this amount. Um, this amount of money. Is in my account for the first time. No, Emma. I'm a millionaire. Emma, that really that, that didn't make me happy. That's the whole point. Like, because to me, it's not about the money I have now. Oh, were you you, that, you, but, you thought you were dreaming or no, something? No, no, no. To me, it's not the money that I have right now. Because to me, I'm I not. Want to know the first time. I'm not interested in numbers. That's oh, the yeah? thing. I'm not interested in numbers. Like one million, two million, three million. No, no. I'm not, I'm not interested in numbers. I'm interested in achieving things. Okay, are we going to ignore the first million? Yeah, I, I, I ignore it. Hundred percent. Really? I, All of us we I, ignore. I didn't even care. You, you <laughs> shouldn't even care. So here's the thing, though. Oh yeah. Let me tell you something. Mm-hmm. Um, they say, average people. Yeah. Uh, they follow money mm-hmm. and numbers. Okay. But wealthy people. They follow what? Purpose. Well, I love that. So I'm saying. So if you look into your bank account and be happy. Just an average person. Because for you, that number is enough. Mm-hmm. But for me, there is no number that could be enough. Because mm-hmm. to me, I'm looking at bigger things. Influence, mm-hmm. impact, mm-hmm. legacy. Mm-hmm. And, th- I, 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 and those things, you can put a number on it. That is true. When it's 10, you, you feel like you can make it 20. If it's that 20, is, make it 50. Because you want to keep expanding mm-hmm. your, your influence and your impact. Mm-hmm. So you can really be a blessing and influence so many people. So wow. that my my true happiness is in the future, not in the past. Oh, I love that. Yeah, yeah. And how do you define a high value man? High value man, uh, three things. Number one, discipline. Um, there are things that uh, you have to be able to sacrifice, and one of those things is um, I call it um, to know how to there's this word that i'm looking for but it's more of like uh it means to not really have and enjoy everything that you want right now instead restrict those things from you for a while for a bigger purpose Mm. or for a bigger goal Mm. and and, and that's discipline okay Mm. so i'll say that number two i'll say um Someone who's with uh, a vision, mm-hmm. they know who they are, they know where they're going. Mm-hmm. It's very, very important because mm-hmm. you got to know who you are, where you are going. Uh, not Even though you don't have a clear, clear picture, but at least know where you're going for the next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, at least know your five, six next moves. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not saying just have a clear picture. No, mm-hmm. no one has. Mm-hmm. But at least what are your next five, six steps? Mm-hmm. You know, next move. Very, very important. 
And number three, um, someone who really, really is in love. It's in love with learning. Mm. To me, when it comes to high value, man, I wouldn't be in, say, successful money, you know. I would mm-hmm. say, love studying, love learning, you know, learn from everybody, learn from everything, read, research, keep learning. Number two, um, know where you are, your vision, have a vision, have a couple goals in your life. Three, be disciplined. Mm. You know, how to know how to discipline yourself. You know, if you need to budget a little bit today and so we can save for future investments, do it. You know, maybe if you need to um, not go to party because you can't afford it right now, do it. Wow. If you can't afford that expensive watch, you know, it's not in your 10%, mm-hmm. just leave it for a while. 10%. You know, yeah. yeah. Just leave it for a while, mm-hmm. you know, first do that. So yeah, those three things. Even if you're not considered in the society as a high value man, you'll be a high value man if you have yeah. those two. If you have those three things, mm-hmm. yeah. And if if you had the whole world listening to you, literally right now, you had one message to give to them. What would be the message? One message. One message. One one word. One message. It could okay. be a sentence. I'd say hope. Hope hope um because the thing that almost killed me you know when i went through my depression and my sickness and everything i was starting to lose hope and that's a very very dangerous thing Mm. very dangerous when you lose hope because when you lose hope you don't you can't see anything Mm. yeah faith what is faith Faith is substance of things hoped for. Without hope, there's no faith. There's no vision. There's no goals. There's nothing. You're it's, dead. It's dark. Yeah. It's, dark. it's, it's depression. It's yeah. anxiety. It's worry. Yeah. So let's say hope. You know, hope. I think um, keep on hoping. Have that hope. Keep working hard. Keep learning. Um, one day, for sure. One day for sure, opportunities will come. And when opportunities will come and find you being prepared and full of hope, something will happen. Wow. Something will happen. And that brings us to the end of our conversation. I mean, I, are you ready to spend only 10% of everything that you're making? So that's the first thing. And also, please never lose hope. At the end of everything, Every tunnel, there There's is a light. light. So no matter what, what you're going through, you might not be in your best days of your life, but please keep your hopes high and keep working. As Gail said, as you prepare yourself, as you work on yourself, opportunities will come and your life will be amazing. Like you will achieve your purpose. You're here for a meaning, for a reason. You're not an accident. So thank you very much for being with us. It was, uh, it was uh, an immense pleasure having you all with us here on Conversations with Irma. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.